Hey there. So, if you're a smart home builder like me, or you're running a home lab, or maybe working from home, which is, uh, yeah, quite a thing nowadays, then chances are you know, need a firewall because, well, you need to protect yourself from being hacked. Or you just have a lot of wireless devices and a lot of networks and just want to uh, control which device can access what on your network. So, in this video, I will introduce you to IPFire, which is an easy to use open source firewall. So, it is perfect for beginners or people who just want to have a firewall set up without too much hassle. So, if you're interested, keep watching. But first, if you're new to the channel, let me introduce myself. My name is Laszlo Merza, and this channel is about home networking, home automation, and sometimes about uh, DIY electronics and a little bit of 3D printing. Anyway, Let's continue with the video. Let me introduce you to IPFire. So, as you will see, installing IPFire is pretty easy, but uh, there's a catch. So, first you go to www.ipfire.org, then uh, there's this big red download button for you. So, so far it's easy. Then you have a few options here. So you can download via your browser or via your BitTorrent client, it's up to you. I will just uh, normally do the uh, browser based download. Then there's um, two sections, uh, there are two sections, one for uh, the AMD64 uh, sec uh, platform and the other one is for ARM, which is a Raspberry Pi. And um, within the AMD64 is an image and flash image. Now, flash image is basically a ready to run flash drive. So, just like in a case of ARM, if you write it to a flash drive, it will boot and you can start using it. But if you want to install it on an SSD, things get a bit more complicated. But don't worry, we will just do it together. So, you click ISO image. This is a download, and then uh, you will need to use a tool called Rufus. Now, for the first time, I tried other tools like Balinatcher and stuff like that, and they didn't work because uh, there's a special mode needed for writing this ISO image to a flash drive. And apparently only Rufus can do it for you, or maybe a tool I'm not familiar with. Anyway, so here's how we do it with Rufus. So Rufus is a portable open source tool, you can download it and then when you run it you're presented with this screen. If you're familiar with Rufus, I'm not telling you much new here. Then uh, you, will select, uh, you will have to select, select the button, then uh, the ISO file we have just downloaded. So it should look like something like this. If uh, it ends with an exe extension, then uh, you have probably downloaded the wrong file. So we will select the ISO file, then uh, it will auto detect a few things. Then you can, uh, after of course uh, plugging in the flash drive, it will appear here, and then you can click start. And then you have to select right in DD image mode. Doesn't matter that uh, the other one is the requirement or, or the recommended mode. So then you will select this one, then OK, and yeah. So that's the actual uh, special mode that did the image mode. So writing the flash will uh, take like a minute or something like that, and we are done. And uh, we can just close and uh, boot our hardware from this flash drive. And then the actual installation procedure can begin. So you need to boot the hardware from that uh, flash drive you have just created. So I'm just booting from the flash drive. There we go. And you are greeted by an installation screen of IPFire which is quite nice and sophisticated, I guess. So we want to install IPFire. Uh, 
Okay, so select your language. Yeah, let's just stay with English. Right, and then start the installation. Accept the license. Yeah. We'll just create a new file system on the disk. So, as I mentioned, we're installing it on an SSD. Actually, Ivifier itself will only use a portion of the disk, but uh, as I will show you later on, Ipfire allows you to install plugins, which uh, yeah can come quite handy, and uh, actually can provide a lot of extra functionality for your firewall rig. So it actually can be more than that, more than just a firewall. Okay, after it is done, you need to reboot um, and uh, yeah, of course, remove the flash drive. So yeah, this is now Grub, which is the Linux bootloader and uh, yeah, now it's booting IP fire from the SSD. Okay, keyboard mapping, then time zone. So I'm in Hungary, so just Budapest time zone, then the host name. IP Fire will do it for me. Then the domain name. Domain name is uh, probably set on your router if your router is capable for it. For example, it it is usually something like local domain or local and uh, or LAN in my case. So actually my machine will be visible as ipfire.lan on the network. So I will just uh, hit LAN so and then you have to set a password for the root user. This is uh, that you use when you're accessing ipfire via command line. So just let me set a super secure password. Then another password for the admin UI. And this is where we are getting to the network configuration type. So you can see that the default is current config green plus red. Okay, so it means that uh, the IP fire uh, differentiates uh, two zones. Red means the wider network or your main network if uh, this uh, firewall is uh, uh, isolating a selected subnet and green means the network inside the firewall so this is like the default configuration and it's pretty normal pretty okay for us other possibilities are adding blue like a wireless network if uh, there's a separate wireless access point attached then you can add an orange on top of all these, which is a DMZ for um, external servers or bastions or whatever. Okay, so we can go to address settings and we want to configure green. Actually, it says reconfigure, so there are actually pretty good uh, default configuration values added. So for green, yeah, this is just a warning. So IP address, um, if you don't want to have, uh, or actually this is the green. So uh, this machine has to have a, a fixed IP address. So let's say, I'm separating this subnet here and uh, this will be also a gateway within that subnet. Okay, and we are done. So pretty basic configuration. Then gateway settings. Um, 
this is for the red and uh, only for uh, when you are configuring the red uh, interface the interface looking towards the outside network with a static IP address otherwise uh, the DSCP server which provides the let's say a wider network address or the outside IP address for the red interface uh, that will just uh, select a gateway for it so no need to manually set it right now okay so we are done with this part as well next no green interface assigned okay so I think yeah I forget this part so actually you have to have two network cards as usual because at least because this is a firewall so there we go then I select one for the green and the second one for the red and obviously you have to plug in your cables accordingly Missing an IP address on red, it means that uh, either the cable is uh, not connected or, I mean for the red interface, or uh, you have made a mistake for address settings. So let's take a look. Red. So yeah, that's the problem because default it expects that it will be statically set, but I will just set it to DHCP and then we leave everything on default there we go now it is done and finally we are done so ip fire itself can act as a dhcp server it is not necessary to have it because for example if within your network you are running some other dhcp server then you can just have this turned off but now i'm creating a separate subnet so i will enable the dhcp server and it means i have to provide two ip addresses uh, which will act as the boundaries for uh, the address pool normally this is something like the first ip address in the given subnet and then something depending on how many uh, machines or nodes or sensors or devices in general you have in that subnet because of the small subnet I will just enter uh, actually this because one is already taken and then I will just uh, set, let's say, this one, which means we can still distribute a lot of IP addresses. And in this case, uh, IP Fire will also act as a DNS server, or actually a proxy DNS server. It means that uh, this setting means that clients will turn to IP Fire for uh, address resolution and uh, IP Fire will just uh, forward the request to the outside um, server on the wider network on the outer or in the red network but you can change this and then uh, and then for example you can have Pi-hole set up as your DNS server within uh, this uh, dedicated uh, firewall subnet so other than that we are fine and setup is complete so we are good to go and this time IP fire will boot for normal operation if you are facing problems like this like uh, like failure for starting DHCPD on the red zero interface it means that uh, you have uh, your cables uh, not plugged or wrong or plugged in a wrong way because this means DHCPCD 
which means DHCP client daemon, as far as I know, and uh, it means that it tries to actually acquire an address from your outside LAN, from your outside DHCP server, but it's not working because it's can, it cannot connect to it. So in that case, I will just uh, have to check my wiring and then reboot the system. And by wiring, I mean cables, of course. So second boot and um, as you will see, everything should be running much smoother. So as you can see, now we have an IP address and host name and actual DNS data, gateway data. So this time the red interface selected properly. Yeah, I had the cable uh, plugged in the wrong way. So actually the interface of that I selected to be uh, the green interface was uh, plugged into the router or the switch and not the red one. So I just switched cables and there we go. So at this point you can uh, either log in with the root user, user and start uh, administration from the command line or even better you can uh, access the web UI. For that you will need to connect something like a laptop or a PC to the green interface and um, as soon as IP address is uh, either provided by the DHCP server you have just set up on uh, IP fire or uh, the IP address you have uh, configured manually, uh, you will be able to connect the IP fire on port 444 and then you will be able to do the configuration. So just let me quickly do this. So upon connecting the first time to IP fire, this is the screen that greets you. This just means that uh, IP fire is using self-signed certificates for HTTPS so you can freely ignore it without uh, thinking about are you being hacked or something like that. After that you can just log in with the credentials provided during the installation. So by this time you can see that uh, the IP fire installation uh, is working and uh, it shows the networks correctly and uh, also provided an IP address for my laptop obviously because otherwise I couldn't connect and uh, in this part of the video I will just show you a quick glimpse of all the features uh, IP Fire has because uh, otherwise it would mean a tremendous amount of time to go through all the features and uh, talk, them, talk about them in detail. So instead in the future I will create a video about noteworthy features and major configuration things you can do on the UI. If you are interested and want to see the continuation of this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed, uh, please subscribe to the channel, uh, I would be very very grateful for that. And uh, yeah, with this I think it's time to conclude this video because we have reached our goal, we have uh, installed IP Fire, it's up and working, although it's still an empty firewall without rules, so more like a router. But then again, that's a topic for a future video. Anyway, thanks for watching this and hope to see you next time, next week, with another video. Bye! You're still here. That's good, because that means you kinda like my video. If so, feel free to check out these other videos too. And uh, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. That helps me a lot. And uh, yeah, if you click the bell button, you will get also notified about new videos.